Benedict. a software engineer and in this video we're going to be studying and preparing for tech interviews. Now you might be thinking did she get laid off like why is she interview? No I did not get laid off. I am still full-time employed but I know a lot of software engineers at big tech companies or just any tech companies in general every year they will interview. It's really good to know your worth on the job market so that you know, you're not being lowballed by a company so that people pay you your worth. You don't want anyone to pay you less than your worth. It's important to know your worth. And that's what happens when you interview and you get job offers and you just stay up to date every year in the job market. So let's say you're loyal to a company for five, 10 years and then you get laid off 10 years later. It's gonna be kind of hard for you to get back in the job market to like compete with people who have been interviewing every year. And it's just really good practice to, because tech interviews require like a different set of thinking than your usual day-to-day -day job, especially when it comes to data structures and algorithms. So it's just good practice for me and that's what I'm doing now. And yeah, we'll be studying and I'll be doing a take-home project. So yeah, watch till the end of this video. Let's get into it. So I was planning on working out at a coffee shop or somewhere outside, but I feel, I don't feel like it. So we're just gonna work from home. Today is Saturday. So I don't have to work, like do, um, my job like i don't have to, i don't have to do official work but i just want to work on my hobbies and like learning and stuff to upskill so i have a plan that i wrote down yesterday of what i wanted to do today so i want to learn about hash collisions and yeah how to prevent them because I was asked this in an interview question recently and I did my best guess and I shared my thought process and how I would prevent a hash collision. But you know, like like interviewers don't always look for the right answer, but for like a simple question like this, they tend to see if you know you know the basics. So I don't know the basics of hash collision. So that's what I want to learn right now. And then later I'm gonna do a take home project. I'm going to learn more about software architecture and then I'm gonna go back to doing the take home project. So yeah. Let's set a timer for 60 minutes, but I want one of those aesthetic ones on YouTube that have like a calming sound. Timer starting. What's up geeks and welcome to the channel. Today's video targets associative arrays or what you may know as hash tables, maps, or spent 30 minutes learning about hash collision prevention um, so I'm just gonna give a recap as you know if you study computer science if you're trying to become a developer a map or a hash map or a dictionary is basically all the same thing and how a dictionary the lookup time of a dictionary is like O of N right so it's like pretty fast it's constant time so how a dictionary works is that it has a hashing algorithm to sort of put all the elements in a certain way to make it super fast. Um, but because this algorithm could potentially have a collision where it, it creates a hash that 
is the same as another hash to store data, it's, that's a collision. Like you don't want it to have the same hash because you have different elements, right? You don't wanna, you don't want to have the different elements be the same hash. And then when you retrieve um, the element, like you get the other element instead of the one you wanted. So ways to prevent hash collisions is through chaining and open addressing. And that's what I've learned so far. <laughs> Implementation wise, I, I should practice that, but I don't know, not a lot of companies ask, like how do you implement a hashing algorithm um, and prevent hash collisions in your hashing algorithm. But I sort of like, um, I'm watching this video and the way to implement the chaining part is to sort of use an array and a linked list, which is, which reminds me a lot of LRU cache, the leak code problem. So yeah, those are my thoughts. Um, I think that's good for now. I think I'm gonna go down my list and see what to learn next. So I want to learn how memory is allocated on the stack versus on the heap and stuff like that. Okay, let's do that. So I'm gonna set a timer for another 30 minutes been studying for 30 minutes. Okay, I'm gonna show you the other video. So I spent 30 minutes learning about stack versus heap memory allocation, and I took some notes. So here's what I learned. <laughs> I, I feel like I still need to learn more though. Okay, reference types are stored on the heap and value types are stored on the stack. So if you have, let's say a struct in Swift is using a, a struct is a value type. So that's stored on the stack or as a class in Swift is a reference type, it's stored on the heap, and each thread has its own stack. So a process is like your web application, your um, mobile application, um, your app, basically, your software, your process. It may not be an app, can be a daemon. Um, and a daemon is a process, and a process can have a uh, many threads and within each thread, each thread has its own stack. So that is what I've learned so far. I'm gonna learn more later, but I'm gonna go have lunch now and then we'll get back to studying something else. I just made some sort of my version of eggs benedict without the hollandaise sauce. So just English muffin, sunny side egg, and some ham. And that's my lunch. I just made a protein shake with spinach. And this is a vanilla protein from Giovanni, which is not my super favorite, but it's fine. And then I just added ice and water and 85 grams of spinach, which is 20 calories, so that's with the protein that's like 150 calories with like 22 grams of protein. Okay, it tastes decent. It's not bad. I finished my lunch. I made some tea instead of coffee because I can drink coffee a lot. Um, but I'm replacing it with tea so that I have less caffeine and I don't get jittery, but I'm still drinking something hot. I think now I'm gonna work on my take home project. So this might be blurred out. And if 
you hear any noise in the background, that is my dishwasher going off. project for like the last 90 minutes and I think I can really get into the groove of it and it's so much more fun than coding for a company or coding for work because like at work everyone all the developers on the team nitpick and they give you feedback and they want you to change things so that it's more readable so that it's cleaner and like it's just to make it easier for future developers or anyone coming on board to ramp up quickly so we don't want like ugly code um and so like when i'm working i always think about like oh i need to make sure that i write it this way so that i have less feedback to fix in my pull request but when I'm like coding alone at home, it's just so much more fun because I'm just like going, going, going. No one's stopping me. There's nothing I have to worry about right now. I'm gonna clean it all up at the end when it's done. And yeah, like coding on your own is so much more fun than coding for work because you also have deadlines at work and you have feedback, criticisms, um, and when you're coding on your own, you can just build whatever you want, whatever you feel like building. So that's been fun. Uh, it's like 3.30 now. I'm gonna grab a snack and take a break. I just ordered some Thai iced tea. It looks so good. Um, and some Vietnamese beef vermicelli, rice vermicelli bowl. <laughs> and yeah, I'm more excited about the Thai iced tea though. It's my favorite. I don't wanna put my Thai iced tea into like a double insulated cup so that it stays cold and I can add more ice to make the drink last longer because I can drink this super fast. go down but yeah I still have I still have this much left I'm trying to make it last mm. so I'm gonna change and then head to the gym we'll work out and then we'll come back shower and then probably work in bed because the bed looks really good right now and yeah.
done with my workout. Well, actually I did 30 minutes of body weight, glutes and abs. I kind of want to use the machines for back workout, um, but I might just do 30 minutes of incline treadmill. Closes, so I wanted to do a full hour of incline treadmill, but I didn't get to. So now we're just gonna go home and take a shower and then do some, some more studying. Hey, just got back home. I just wanted to drink sparkling water before I wash up. Yeah. Ah. <sighs> video motivated you in some way. It definitely motivates me and keeps me accountable when I'm documenting what I'm learning and doing with you all. So yeah, today's I would say a productive day. I got to work out, I got to exercise my brain, and yeah, I really appreciate the view that I have. So pretty. That thing up there is Salesforce Towers, little 360, basically, TV screen. <laughs> they have whatever they want on it, and it's currently Dreamforce week, I think, so they're having lots of events and lots of people are in town. I hope to see you all in the next video. Good night!